So this is a scene down at Manx Gas and at the moment a small proportion of the people who are up at Timwald offices have come down here and some have actually gone inside. We've got these shots of people going inside to discuss their bill which of course uh, will be interesting to see what they're saying. Uh, I have to say uh, these scenes earlier you'll see outside Timwald I think we counted about 50 people in there with some MHKs and quite a lot of media. Uh, so I think they were hoping for more, but it certainly was a, quite an active demonstration. Uh, we talked to Mr Murphy, who was the one behind this, and this is what we had to say. Hope to achieve, basically, that the, the government and Manx Gas come together and um, basically get rid of the standing charges, the banning standing charges. Just get rid of it, it has to go, it, it's unfair. I mean, we have members in our group that are paying more in the summer, and now they're scared to put the gas on in the winter, so they don't know if they're gonna pay more or less people don't know where they stand. You created this on a Facebook group. Uh, are you impressed so far what you turn out it's like? You know, for this sort of event? I mean, the, that, that charge has been in now for over a year, hasn't it? The charge has been in for over a year, but then again, my group has been up and running for over six months. You know, I've been slowly but surely building it up. Um, I think we had to maybe possibly give the banding standing charges a chance, if you like, to see how they, how they actually ran, or, or whether it was fair or whether it wasn't fair. But I think... Um, Behind the scenes, people like me have looked into it a little bit, and certain elements—sorry, certain elements of it just do not sit well. It's just not right. We also uh, talked to some of the MHKs who came out of their offices to meet the protesters. So we've just come out to see really the issues that people are raised. We've seen a little bit of the information via Facebook, but we think the best thing to do is to come out and talk to people firsthand. That's what we're here for. We're here to represent people. So. And, and it's also listening to people's very valid concerns about the price structure of Manx Gas and to see how it's affected individuals. Do you have a stance on this? I mean, if you could vote on it, would you go for this current system? I don't think the current system is ideal and I think it's quite evident by the, the strength of opinion here that it isn't working for, some, for certain people. And so that's why it's important that when it's renegotiated next year, that's done in an open and transparent per, uh, you know, um, way and that everyone takes part in it. Absolutely. I think it's, it's clear that this structure is aimed very much at high level users of gas and that is really affecting those people on low level who are still facing the same standing charges. So. If we had the opportunity to vote now, I wouldn't support this, this structure. And if that was allowed through an agreement, I wouldn't support the agreement. We have to be sure that next year we get ourselves absolutely clear so we tie up all those loopholes and we prevent the opportunity for people to be potentially left literally in the cold at winter. It's just been explaining to me, Paul, with regards to the standing charge and the published price is different to what's come on his recent bills. So there's clearly something going on that's... And where do you stand on this? Of. I am with the people because I'm a gas user myself. I'm fully aware of the situation and how it's impacted on me. And there's an awful lot of people struggling. So I think it does need looking at. And, and looking at in what way? I mean, the bill's coming down or just... A, a rethink on how they I think that people work. need to have good communication from the government as to what is in this contract, why it's been they've been allowed to change. Yes, it's bill for the gas. Forty three eighty six charge for the standing charge. Has that's the bill. And that's since the standing May. Charge. It's gone up again in July from seventy two to now it's seventy four point something. So there is changes happening in there and if that's not communicated, people will always want to protest. I think it's the only way that we're going to get this sort of I'm of the understanding, but I'm not a legal person, that perhaps there is something in the contract that the government can start looking at it now, um, but I hope Mr Perkins will do that. And, you know, we need some answers and we need it communicating well to the people. But, of course, all the tension was on Mr Perkins, and uh, he's, of course, in charge of the OFT, and I put it to him that this was a bit of a mess. I wouldn't say that, Paul. This is public protest. This is democracy in action. But it's been in for over a year. I mean, people have gone through this. So why suddenly now do you think this is this sort of anger is coming to the fore? I think that uh, winter is coming, and there are some genuine people that are struggling, and uh, this is why the anger sort of boiled over. And you know, the OFT is the one that carries the can. You, you were in the media saying there's nothing I'm going to do about this. Didn't you say that? It came across wrongly, and uh, I, I, you know, I said that the OFT is responsible for the. Um, the agreement with Manx Gas, making sure that Manx Gas abide by that agreement. And as such, there is very little I can do unless Manx Gas uh, don't abide by the agreement. 
So are you going to rip that up and start again? Absolutely not. We shall go back and examine the agreement in, in greater detail. And um, uh, sorry, a dog just <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> we shall examine that in greater detail. And um, I will be talking to the AGs and uh, the Treasury Minister, and we will be um, examining what we can do going forward. Do you think it's unfair? Uh, we need to make sure Manx Gas abide by that agreement. How do you feel? Do you think it's unfair? I'm, I'm not going to put my personal um, feelings into this, uh, Paul, because I'm being given a job by the Chief Minister and uh, I'm not one to shirk out on any job. Um, I know that I'm public enemy number one at the moment and uh, I, I will see this through to the end as my duties you know, require. Then Mr Perkins addressed the uh, crowd and uh, he got a bit of uh, hassle, a bit of uh, feedback from some of the people there. This is what he was saying to the crowd. The, the standing charge is actually dearer than the gas itself. That's exactly what we're looking into. Yeah, I can understand I've got, understand your, I've got uh, the sheets here that say my gas was, and uh, my standing charge was 72 pence. Without notification, they put it up to 74 pence. But the D band that they issued originally, there's no 72 and no 74. Right. So somewhere in their system, they are cooking the books. So I've got it here, all in black and white. Yep. And mine go back years. So and my bill arrived two hours ago this morning. Yep. And I say it's it's actually dearer to pay the standard charge than what it is to pay for the gas. And that's exactly why we need to address this agreement. Well, now, this has been going on, and it's taken yep. this to to g things up. Everybody sat on their hands and waited in here. They've all sat in this building waiting for something like this to happen and then they come out on a day in sunshine, we're going to work miracles. Are you going I'm not, to... I'm not saying we're going to work miracles, no, but, but the government is uh, in a position where we have to abide by this contract, whether you like it or not as a consumer. Now, there are things going on behind the scenes and if... <laughs> if Go on. I've had the courtesy to listen to yeah, you. Yeah. Would you have the courtesy yes, to listen I to will. me? Thank you. Now, th there is a lot going on behind the scenes and the um, agreement, if I broke it by doing a price investigation, I hear exactly what you're saying. If I initiate a price investigation, which is my initial reaction as Office of Fair Trading, that's my first reaction, we would be in breach of contract. And that would open a lawsuit from Manx Gas, and the government really can't get into another lawsuit and that, that size. What you're the telling me well, is, on, what, what you're telling me I, is I, that I, you I, cannot look I, into this for a whole year. That is as it appears at the moment. So but we are, our we are, hands are no, tied now until March no, next year. What I'm saying is we can't go against the agreement. And you didn't let me finish because if we went against the agreement, we would be in breach of contract and Manx Gas would not be held to any, any constraint at all. And can you imagine which way the prices would go if we did that? Well, we know that, yeah. but yeah. you're telling me then there's a caveat that you cannot look at the prices, not say to do anything about the prices, but you cannot look at the prices without a lawsuit coming in your direction. The agreement states that Manx Gas is allowed to make 9.99% profit. Correct. No more, no less. And that is the situation I'm in. And I'm tied. I can't do a price investigation. We cannot go against the agreement. So that is where we're at. And I'm, I'm sorry if you don't want to hear that, but that is my position as a government mm -hmm. officer. I'm, I'm, I'm not very popular at the moment, but I've been given a job to do by government, and that is where we're at. But so, surely you can investigate this without the lawsuit coming in your direction. You, you're trying to tell me that your hands are completely tied. You can do nothing. This protest out here is going to be a waste of time. I won't say it's a waste of time because it's uh, highlighted um, the plight to, to the general public and the, way, the manner in which people are protesting is, is very sensible and um, the Office of Fair Trading's position is we have to look at that contract. We cannot change it until 2018, but we will yes, be, you can. But we you will be can. looking at yes, it. Yes, you can. You can change it. Anyway, right. You can. Ladies okay. and gentlemen. It's just that you don't want to. You want to listen to what I've got to say? Please gather round. Oh, oh. There's a man in charge. Absolutely. Somebody's got to take charge of it, haven't they? Yes. A whistle is normally for a dog. Yes, exactly. Well, how yes, else exactly. is I going to get everybody around? Yes. Would you like well, to come in from the end, please? Well, under normal circumstances, you would shout. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and first of all, I thank you for coming and expressing your grievances today. And in case you don't know who I am, I am Martin Perkins, and I am chair of the Office of Fair Trading. And it falls upon me to look at that Manx Gas project. Uh, contract. 
which I will do. But before... I've had the courtesy to listen to you, sir. Would you please allow me the courtesy to speak to you? Thank you. Now, uh, before we get into it, I would like to thank Barry Murphy for the way he's conducted his Facebook um, campaign. He has kept it non-personal, he has kept bad language out of it, and he has kept the um, personal insults out of it. And to me, that's a measure of the man and the measure of concern which, which we should uh, give the people that are on that page. On that page, there has been comments to the effect that where are all the other MHKs, what are they doing about it? They've been very quiet. And my personal take on that is, they have had a look at the contract and they realise there is very little we can do. And they've kept quiet purely and simply because they don't want to muddy the waters. And I thank the MHKs for that. Now when I took over the Office of Fair Trading some nine months ago, the first thing I did was to investigate uh, various contracts that we had, including the Manx gas contract. And it came apparent to me that we are stuck into this contract until 2018. Now I know that is not what you guys want to hear, but that is what the situation is. Now, where do we go from here? That is the burning question that we all want to know. Firstly, we take on board your concerns. I understand there are people struggling to pay their bills. And as Office of Fair Trading, we are the people's champions, believe it or not. Now, I will be going back to government, reinvestigating the contract that we have, I will be running it past the Attorney General's office with a fine tooth comb. I will be addressing the other officers in the Office of Fair Trading. And you may be aware that we have been discussing things with the Treasury Minister and the MUA Utilities uh, in, uh, Committee. So there are moves afoot going on. And finally, I have invited Manx Gas to come in and give a full presentation to the members of Tinwald, which hopefully will take place they assure me, in November at some point. And it will be interesting to see how they respond after today's pressure. Could I just now, for your... Mr. Martin, for, I haven't, you quite, I haven't no, quite finished no, yet. Just one From your part, you I would just like ago, to say you that, that I understand you, you are not, marching down you could not to the sea terminal you could not do to the South Quay to further put your, your to put your prices, uh, put your, your concern up. about Manx prices to the Manx Gas Utility Company. And I wish you well with that, and I will be watching their response. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot dictate to them outside the terms of the contract. And that is where, that is where it stands. So I thank you for coming today, and that is all the comment I am going to make. Thank you for coming. Thank you. The people that voted you in, the people that voted you in. And of course, Jan, who we interviewed yesterday, uh, she then joined in by saying uh, that she was going to hold these requisition meetings around the island. I have a requisition letter for the captain of every parish. I need 12 registered voters minimum to sign the requisition letters. We are calling, the captains of the parish are calling a compulsory meeting with the MHK we have a list of questions to ask them, and we'd very much like to hear their answers. If they're not what we want to hear, as the law currently stands, we can sack every man jack of them. And that's exactly what we need to do. So, if you will sign the letters, if you are a registered voter, come and see me, sign the letters, and let's give them all the door. The good ones that are here supporting us, the ones with the heart to Manx, meet the Manx heart. We because seen, we have heart. We haven't seen Be our MHK for six years. No. Not no, once no. has she been up to see us. No. Same here. That's because she's on the gravy train, darling, and yes, it never all. stops yes, I can at a station. Yep. Yep. So it. let's derail the gravy train. Yay. Derail the gravy train! Get them out! Get rid of the lot of them! All of them! 
So that's what's been happening down here at Manx Gas. We think about 20 people have made it down from the offices and uh, asking people to toot their horns, which you can hear. Certainly, it's got people thinking, nothing else. Uh, the power of social media that can create this, an event, of course, that happened well over a year ago, but certainly it seems to have got the attention of the public to some degree, and the MHK certainly say they're listening.